Welcome everybody, you're watching Mr. Fugu Data Science. Today we're using the Kaggle API to download some data specifically. You need to create an account with Kaggle and then download the API key. So after you log in, you're going to have a page that looks like this. You'll go on the right hand side for your profile and click this where my cursor is. Then you'll scroll down and you'll find this highlighted portion that says create new API key. You'll download this. The next thing you're going to want to do is create a folder that will store this file. It'll look like this if you're using Windows or this if you're using Linux or Mac. Now after you move that file into there, you need to do an install for Kaggle with pip. Pip or pip3 depending on what you got going on. Take note if you have Mac you may have an additional issue where you may need to do this setup here and add the dash dash user if you have problems with installation. Depending on your Python dependency if you're uh, using Conda like I am I suggest doing this install right here. Now after that if you would like to look at any command line utilities for Kaggle or any further examples for submissions or retrieving any kernels, look at these two resources. The link in description for my GitHub will be down below. Thank you also to the recent subscribers and viewers. I greatly appreciate it. You need a few imports today. We're going to work with some zip files so you get an idea of what's going on with that. We're going to find files and directories and then we'll use our good old friend pandas. You need to create your connection call with Kaggle here. The first time you're running it, you'll probably get something that looks like this. You'll need to take this command right here, right here, and put it into the terminal. It'll have, of course, your computer name. And this is allowing you to basically close off and make it a private file so your user credentials for Kaggle are not displayed for every user so they don't have permission to just start using it. The next thing we can do is look at something. When you're on Kaggle, you have a layout like this. You'll find the competitions here and then you could scroll through. You can hit a tab like this and look at different categories. For instance, I have getting started here. And these are basic examples that will help you if you've, you're one new to data science and just trying to get practice programming and doing these tasks and two using Kaggle. Therefore, we print it off and it's the first page that you have with these entries. Doesn't mean they're in the exact order that you see from the statement above. We have other parameters that we can look for such as groups and categories. We can look at pages. If you were trying to scrape multiple pages then you just have to iterate through this depending on what you're trying to store or create. I don't know your situation. And you have a sort by parameter as well. We can look at competitions using the CLI, which is basically your command line interface or utility, giving you the same kind of printout where we have a specific competition that we're interested in. It gave the deadline for your submissions. If you did this, what do you win? Nothing. It's just for knowledge in this case. It was in the getting started category. And then there were 577 teams who participated in this. And this one in here, I don't know what that stands for. You can take a particular competition and find out what files are available for you to download using this right here where you're listing the files. And remember anything that you're doing since we created this API variable before or above, anything with a dot notation allows you to call various methods. Okay, and here's everything that you can start dealing with. Just depends on what you're interested in. We're not going over all of these today because there's a bunch, but just letting you be aware of that. Now, you can directly throw one of your search results here into a data frame if you wanted to just pull this and for some reason you have that option. For instance, I took the Legos and we printed this off. This is a JSON formatting if you're curious, and we could do processing on this if we wanted to, and I'll show that as well. Since this is JSON, I pulled the first entry so we can see what's going on. You have this reference that refers to the person who owns this particular item for this data, data set or whatever it is, right? You have some kind of title of what's going on with these Legos. You have the description, which is kind of strange because this is in the tags, which is nested, where your values are lists of dictionaries. And I'll show how you can get to that so we can get some practice as usual of working with JSON and nested data. But the weirdest thing, 
these tags that have the description of what your data are don't even relate to what the heck you're doing. I don't even know who made them. They're weird. Anyway, there's other relevant information like the size of the files, which is interesting. You would have to convert these if you wanted to find out how many megabytes or, or gigabytes it is. The direct path for this URL, which could be useful if you were pulling all the URLs and then just scraping all the data from that. And then there's this pretty interesting parameter, which is your usability rating, but we're not dealing with that today. Now, what I did was decide to iterate through our search results for the Legos, okay? So your search results are gonna look just like this JSON that we saw above for however many entries we print off, it should be, I think, 20. And of interest, I decided to take the ID, the reference, and the title, go inside the nested portion for the tags, and if it is not an empty list, append the description for here. This is denoting that I had to go inside of the list of values and from there I'm taking the key that has the description and I'm appending its value. Otherwise, throw in a none value of that string if it's unavailable. And here's what we have printed out. Okay, some of these are pretty cool. This one is of particular interest for machine learning and it's of images and I want to do a little project for us on this soon. That's why I thought this would be really cool. Now, as I said before, look at this description. This is supposed to be the descriptive text related to the entry that we searched for. It's irrelevant. I don't even know what's going on there, but whoever put it, it's nonsense. You're going to come into a time when you have a 401 unauthorized. And it's highly irritating when you're trying to connect to this API. At some point when you're using either the command line or the Jupyter Notebook like I'm doing today or Google Colab, however you're connecting this is going to pop up one day. There's no definitive answers on to why this occurs. So this is how I fixed mine yesterday. I went through and I was told uninstall and reinstall it for the Kaggle API. I uninstalled, I went to do it again. That didn't seem to fix it. I got the idea, well, maybe since I have an issue, it could be from the API key. So you go in and you hit this and say expire API token and it'll kill your tokens. And then you re-download it and you put it back into the file or the folder, right? So here's what I did. I re-downloaded it and I tried looking at the file. And I said, okay, I got my parameters. So that looks fine. Let's move it back into this folder. And when I initially looked at the folder, I said, okay, I do have a key that's inside of it, a key with my username and my password, but it's not working. I threw this in and it seemed like it was fine. I ran it in Jupyter Notebook, it worked. I ran this command so I could hide the file. Everything was fine and dandy. The new issue that I have is the command line utility using pure bash scripting to make these commands. The problem appears that I may have, since I have Python separate from the Anaconda, but I'm working with Python through Anaconda here, the path that I have for Kaggle may not be connecting and I need to create a new path, I think. So if this occurs in your situation one day, just be aware of some of the things you could do to rectify this, okay? because it sucks. Now, other than looking at competitions, our main objective today is to look at data set lists. If I was interested particularly in healthcare information, here's all the data sets that are relevant to us here. Let's look at what other parameters we have. We can look at the file type, we can look at IDs, a particular user, and we can look through them and the sizes or sort by's, right? and the pages, we could also iterate through all these pages. So this isn't printing out necessarily everything available. This may be only printing out everything available for the first page. If you're looking for a specific file format, you could just use this, or we just get rid of this real quick and get rid of this and print off everything that has CSV files. Okay, it looks the same, right? So apparently those have CSV files within them. Now, we can get a list of the files for any particular Back up. I took this entry here because I have interest in this and we'll do some analysis on this in a future video. But you could take an individual entry or look through all of these entries in this list and find all the files that are available for it, which is extremely useful because now you can see if there's stuff that you want or may not want, you know, depending on file type or, or whatever. Now, if I'm going to download these files, I need to create a folder for it. So that's what I did here. Since I'm always working out of my current working directory, I just did this, but you could put an absolute path if you want in place of this, and then whatever folder name you want. And you're making a directory. You're throwing your exception with your error if something occurs. And we notice I, I created this path on my desktop. Now, 
I take the file that I'm interested in here and I chuck it into the path that I want here. You don't have to print this off. You could just do an alias with the OS package, just depending on what your situation is. But that's what I did so you can see what's going on. And then I run a bash command here, listing everything that was placed in this after I did my download, which was a zip file. And I said, okay, now I got to unzip this, but let me show you something. Pay attention to this. Other than the path, we could have an unzip equals true, so we could download this and it's unzipped. I chose to keep it zipped for two reasons. One, if you have a large file. Two, to give you another skill or another way to assess something and fix it later, just for some practice, proof of concept. I've used this function many times before in other videos and just adapted it for each use case. I'm going in my current working directory to walk through it. You can put a particular file extension .csv .json, whatever you're looking for and place that in here. Instead, I'm putting the particular file that I'm looking for and using the zero since this was in a list so I could just obtain the string and search for this. I already knew where this was going when it downloaded because I put it as my parameter. I put this function in case one, you don't know where your file is exactly at because you have a lot of folders or you forget in another circumstance and it's something you could use in future work, just cut and paste or just call it in as a function. Now, you have situations where what happens if I have a particular type of data I'm interested in? For instance, if I was interested in going on Kaggle and getting every single file that had to deal with groceries from the search results and just dump all of those files. For instance, I chose CSV files, but you could just leave this absent and just download all of the files for the data sets, okay? You have to be careful with this because when I did a competition before, I had image data that was huge. So you don't want to dump 50, 100, 200 gigabytes of images onto your laptop or your desktop. That's stupid. You want to do something like that instead in Google Cloud or AWS, for example somewhere where you can pull this data and work, work with it freely because otherwise you're not gonna have enough memory in most cases to do these kind of computations, okay? So be aware with that. That's why I, I did this and marked it out so anyone running this code later won't have that mistake. But this is how you set it up, just a simple loop to pull those files, okay? And remember, you can always do the unzip equals true. Now, if I'm extracting this file, I call in the file I'm looking for in its path and I chuck it in just like a with open statement if I'm working with a with open for regular file types, except I'm just using this for the zip file now and I'm reading it in and we print off the directory so you can see what's going on for the files that are inside of it, explaining that everything was extracted and calling it done. I put it into the folder where I have the zip so it just doesn't open on my desktop. So it still stays in the folder that the zip file was downloaded in and we have everything that we can look through. So here's the file path of where the folder is. Here's the zip file and here's the files that we unzip that are all held within this. Now, we could scroll down and throw this into a data frame to see what's going on. I took the test file and threw it into a data frame so we can see what's going on. But if you see, we have a sample submission we can use, test and train for this. So really these last two are what you would use to throw in a data frame and do whatever analysis you want for training, okay? But it was pretty easy because what I did was I just take the path of what I'm looking for, I'm creating a new list, I'm iterating through this, but I'm doing the dot list directory so we can look at what this looks like real quick if you're curious. And this is just showing you what files are in your current directory that you called, okay? But nevertheless, that'll be the conclusion of this video. So please like, share, and subscribe. And if you subscribe, turn on that notification bell. I hope this brought utility to someone. I spend a lot of time on these videos, so please help me keep the lights on and consider buying me a coffee. It'll be in the link in the description below. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video. Bye.